Hey, so today I want to talk a little bit about um, things that you could be doing to your body that uh, that hurt it, but have nothing to do with your instrument. Um, just the little things that you have to do to get through your daily life that could be irritating you um, and you may not be aware of it. So the first thing is driving. For me, just to remind you, uh, my main injury is with my wrist, my left wrist. Uh, so a lot of these demonstrations, I'll be doing them with my right hand because I don't want to irritate my bad wrist. <laughs> um, so the, the first thing about driving is using the turn signal. Uh, most people will just like flick their fingers up and down to, uh, to activate the lever. Just that little bit of resistance causes me aggravation. So when I was wearing a wrist brace, which is when I found out uh, most of these irritations, um, when I was wearing a wrist brace, I, I actually couldn't like flick down because the brace was, was keeping my hand in one position. So now, uh, even to this day, I activate the turn signal with my whole arm. Uh, so as I, I don't like flick my wrist down or flick it up or use my fingers. Sometimes I'll forget and I'll flick it down or up with my fingers and then I feel a twinge of pain and I say, okay, <laughs> gotta remember to not do that anymore. Another driving thing is uh, letting your hands dangle off of the wheel. Like if you're just, you put your fingers over the, the wheel and then relax your arms down. Um, the arm weight uh, pulls on the back of my wrist and that hurts, so it may be slightly illegal or something technically, but I only drive with one hand on the wheel most of the time, especially if I'm driving around town um, and it's not a big deal. Um, I, even if I'm doing like a really sharp turn, I, I will turn as much as I can with my right arm and then just a little flick with like the palm of my hand, uh, the palm of my left hand, so that I don't use, I don't put a whole lot of weird torque um, on my joints and on my tendons. Um, so driving is something to be careful of. Typing is another thing that you probably do every day. Uh, you type emails, papers, text messages, um, and, and typing can really hurt <laughs> if you're not in the right position. Uh, using your cell phone for me, because my thumb is the thumb and tendon and everything is so tender, um, just doing this a lot or playing video games can aggravate me uh, pretty easily. Also, typing at a computer, uh, if you're using a desktop, then try to push the keyboard as far as possible away from you so that you can have your whole arm sitting on the desk uh, and there's like no chance of you dangling off over the side and doing something weird to get to the keyboard. Also, if you are, again, if you're using a desktop or really uh, any surface, make sure that when you put your arms down that your wrists aren't having to lift up and, and create this strange angle for you to use your fingers. I like to use uh, a thawed out ice pack because um, it's a lot like those jelly things, <laughs> those jelly keyboard rests um, that they market, but I've already got something jelly and I don't need to pay for something else. Um, but always make sure that if you're using one of those gel ice packs that it is completely thawed out because you don't want to be freezing your muscles and your tendons while you're trying to use the really tiny ones. It's a bad idea. Um, so typing is a thing to be aware of. iPads and, and laptops, you don't want to be like laying down on your back and then have your thing up on your lap and like doing something really strange. Just watch out for the angles um, that your wrists are at <laughs> when you type. Um, carrying things hurts me <laughs> um, because I have problems with, you know, uh, before I was talking about hands on the wheel and like dangling. Um, stretching and, and hand spread and things like that can hurt me. So uh, take this water bottle, for instance. It's not very big at all, uh, but the spread between my thumb and my the rest of my hand can cause me some aggravation. So what I do is I try to keep my thumb as close to the palm of my hand as I can. 
Um, this, you actually have to like squeeze it to drink out of it. So sometimes I actually have to bring my thumb around, <laughs> oops, uh, thumb around so I can squeeze it. But I always need to make sure that I'm doing this with my right hand if I'm using my thumb. Otherwise I can actually squeeze it um, when I'm doing this. So I need to be careful when I'm using that. Um, if I ever have to carry anything, like say this, um, this is giving, I guess it's getting a spread here um, as well. It's got a little bit of weight to it. Not a whole lot, but enough that it could bother me. Um, this <laughs> is my music history textbook, and I can't lift this at all with my, with my left hand, especially because it's a little floppy, that not only is this heavy and wide, um, but it, it goes, gravity takes it away, and so then it's pulling <laughs> and, and putting some torque on my wrist that that is really uncomfortable. So I either have to use two hands to lift it or use my right hand, but it's actually really preferable that I use two hands. Um, so carrying things can hurt. Um, cooking, sadly, is a thing that can hurt. Uh, cooking and, and doing dishes because this is one of my favorite skillets. It's pretty large um, and it's ceramic, so like nothing sticks to it. Um, and I like to cook a lot of food at one time and then and then uh, put it up and like have it for a few days. So I can't I can't even really lift this skillet um, with my left hand because it's it's so heavy and, and skillets are weirdly balanced things as well. They're really heavy on this side. Um, and so with my right hand, I can I can actually move it because these muscles are a lot more defined, but I can't do that with this hand. It's just gonna like take it and then <laughs> fall over, um, even if it's empty. So it's it's hard for me to cook because I'm right hand dominant. Um, and when I try to like dump things out, I'm like <laughs> scraping at the, <laughs> at the skillet with my left hand, making a big old mess. Um, another thing, is uh, washing dishes, even a plate or a saucer, pushing on my wrist and scrubbing it um, doesn't feel that great. So I'll put it down on the sink and scrub it there or the countertop next to me. Um, another thing is how you sleep. So I used to like to, uh, to take the blanket and ball it up and here's this hand spread that my body really dislikes. Uh, I would do this and then I'd like curl my hand over and like cuddle up to it and that was just awful for my body. Um, so with the wrist brace on, I couldn't even really get my thumb over this far. So it started training it to be closer to the palm of my hand. And I also couldn't do this anymore. So now I sleep um, with with my hands kind of like this, not tight fists, but balled together. Uh, sometimes I'll, I'll grab a little piece of the blanket um, and, and curl it up to me, but, um, but I don't do anything weird with the angles anymore. I've, I've taught myself to only be comfortable sleeping if my wrists are at a very neutral position. Um, to help teach you how to do that, you could get a nighttime wrist brace. I used to be really skeptical of these things because they were expensive. They were like 10 or $15 more expensive than, uh, than the regular wrist braces. And so I, I wondered why anybody would ever need one. And then I got one <laughs> about a year ago, this one. Um, and it is incredible because it, it doesn't have the, the splints in the back like normal wrist braces do, so you get a little bit of flexibility here. Um, and the inside here is is made of, it's a cushion, it's like made of little foam beads or something. And so it still keeps your hand in this kind of position like a normal one does, but instead of kind of forcing you to have a very flat palm with it, this cushion, um, this cushion helps to keep your palm a little bit more rounded and in a super comfortable position. Also, uh, 
it comes up higher on your hand so that your fingers are almost immobile and you can't do anything stupid with those <laughs> in, in the middle of the night either. Um, so I would recommend getting one of these um, if, if your hand is the problem because um, they're good, <laughs> they're a lifesaver. I still wear it every once in a while when my wrist gets really irritated. Um, they might, they're a little expensive, but they'll basically last forever because all you do is sleep in it. So that's, that's for wrist stuff. Um, if you have elbow and shoulder problems, like I do, um, then you need to be careful about how you sit and, and relax <laughs> in things. Because if you do this, this is also putting my wrist in a bad position, but if you just like put your elbow down on the table, um, this can pinch some stuff and it like cuts off the circulation to the lower part of my arm and then my hand feels weird <laughs> so I have to stop that. Same thing will happen um, if I have my arms flat on a table for too long. Um, I need, if you know, if I'm typing I have my, my keyboard pretty far away from me but I need to take my arms away every once in a while. Um, driving in the car, um, this keeps my, <laughs> this will, um, you know, a hard surface here on, on my elbow will cause this to go crazy. Also, it's taking my shoulder from this relaxed position and jacking it up a little higher. Um, the same thing happens in like concert theater seats or, um, I don't know, movie theater seats probably as well. Anything with armrests. Um, they, they take your shoulders and they put it up higher. I'm a short person, so maybe it doesn't happen to tall people, but I have to lift my arms up to put it on armrests. And that, like, it, it jacks my shoulder up. Um, another thing about sleeping, I can't sleep or like lean on this shoulder at all because uh, that just ruins it for days. Uh, even if I'm, you know, leaning back on the, the futon couch thing, <laughs> um, if I lean back and then slightly into the side, if I crunch it around just a little bit, it causes problems. Um, sleeping, I, I can sleep on my right side, but I try to avoid it because if I do, then my body curls up like this because of gravity, and that's putting this shoulder, this bad shoulder, in a really strange position. So I, I try to either fall asleep on my back, or I, now I've started sleeping on my stomach, um, and I'll keep my right arm up beside me, um, but normally my left arm is down because this is not, <laughs> my shoulder is not very mobile at all. And so sleeping like this um, kind of hurts. So I keep my, my arm down as much as possible. I, I might put my right one down sometimes and bring my left one up like this. But I try to make sure that my, my shoulder stays in a neutral position and doesn't ever creep up. Um, sorry this video <laughs> was so long, but hopefully you watched it all because these are a lot of little things that you probably may have never thought of or noticed uh, were irritating your injury. So um, thanks for watching and I hope you feel better soon. Bye.